A lot of people have asked us how much does this car really make? How much does it revve to? How they can make their zen like this? How much does it really cost? Yes, what is really underneath? Hello everyone. We are here to talk about you know our beloved zen, the pocket rocket. We uh, recently had an opportunity to take part at a very nice autocars event at. Hyderabad it was a fantastic outing uh, with the car after a very long time post covid uh, had a great success there with the car uh, performing fantastically and then the small new changes that we made on the car you know working like magic we've been overwhelmed with a lot of people asking us what is really under the hood on the outside it looks like a zen it looks quite nice cute uh, when we went to Hyderabad we had all sorts of surprises because we we had this car parked in one corner of the of the park for me and then uh, a lot of people were quite surprised to see this you know very well dressed car and wow uh, once this thing fired up uh, you know i think then the whole perception changed and then from the time i was able to go out and start setting a a course time it uh, it really uh, rattled people's uh, opinion on the car i thought we should just you know break the suspense and tell people although we've been talking about the car for over a year now this car was debuted last year in july So what's really under the car is the original Zen 1 liter the G10B engine which has been bored and stroked uh, to now displace 1.3 liters. So we didn't really do a swap, we didn't really go in for the ST block or anything because the car came with the G10B the, the two door Zen. So we used the exact same engine, we bored and stroked it and then we tweaked the entire cylinder head, went bigger on the on the whole thing and then we we're running a full blown uh, naturally aspirated race cam. and then the whole bunch of other things now this car was initially budgeted to be a very very uh, low budget car i built this car you know post lockdown last year so the whole objective was to you know with the whole uh, financial scenario being very low you know i just wanted to build something very very cheap very very affordable and pretty much everything on this car has been uh, more or less things that we locally manufactured or sourced or did everything instead of going in for fancy motorsport parts fancy brakes or fancy anything for that matter everything was meant to be affordable and you know light on the pocket so we saw there was a good need to have a short wheel base you know, a really quick tight car that can do such things around the track talking about a zen in particular a zen as a standard car is quite a bad car i must admit this was The Zen was my first car as well uh, in 2005. I must say I have, I've lived with that car for about four years, and I know that as a car, it's a very, very fragile and a very as a car in terms of dynamics and ability, it's quite poor. Definitely not the spirited car that can go around corners. A lot of people have used the Zen uh, for many years in India for drag racing because it was the lightest thing around, and you could swap in a 1.3 or a 1.6 or put whatever you wanted, and you could go uh, go go fast in a straight line. but when it came to cornering the zen wasn't very good it, it it didn't see much success in racing rallying or anything for that matter because a car like this you would see typically uh, after an age of about 15 years or 20 years you can just see that a lot of parts apron the lower joint mounts and they all just rust and they just disintegrate made from very very low gauge you know we we had to do a hell of a lot of work to make this car come alive and really be this you know to turn and stop and do everything exactly like what a race car is meant to be that's when i started you know literally tearing down this car to its bone and we went about doing a complete uh, roll cage and it was not just a roll cage it was the entire chassis that was redesigned and literally uh, redeveloped in some places most of the key points of the arms and the suspension the main bits that would give the car cornering abilities all of them have been tweaked and it's completely reengineered nothing zen underneath it it's everything that i wanted under the car so i wanted the car to turn very very tight generally the zen has a very very lazy steering rack ratio it's it's quite lazy the minute you turn the wheel the first few degrees you don't see anything and then is when the car actually starts to take change direction so to make the car come alive very very fast the direction change extremely pointy and uh, uh, quick had to do a lot of work on the car with the entire geometry uh, i'll just walk around and show you guys what has been really done uh, what all ways i can so this car as you guys can see it's a two door I, me being a hardcore uh, car enthusiast, I didn't want to lose any essence of this car. Although it's a stripped-out race car, we didn't want to lose a whole bunch of the car's essence of being a two-door. So all you can see is that we've knocked off the 
original uh, glass and we replaced them with polyurethane sheets and likewise here uh, the entire winding uh, the power window mechanism has been removed and it's just the just the open close latch and then you can see here there's a full blown roll cage it's connected to various parts of the chassis the dashboard is entirely standard the only thing removed from it is the blower and the ac unit the entire dashboard the original speedo the you know the dual tone the silver and black theme of the of the two door is is maintained and if you go inside you can actually see there's still the cup holder and the the whole bit of plastics inside there's still the act glove box which is still active and as you come behind uh let's show you guys that uh, we still have a functional uh, rear boot although it's fiber glass we have still uh, you know maintained the latches and the whole thing and and you can see inside you still have the body panels of the two door it's it's all original everything not one part of the floor has been chopped no weight reduction nothing so we have the battery relocated to the rear and then everything is is the standard bit of course this has been replaced with the polycarbonate and then as we uh, see on the side of the car there's there's very little work on the, it's actually a lot of work that's done on the side body you can see the arches but uh, they still look very zenish i didn't want to go extremely uh, vicerish with you know very big uh, fender arches and you know making it look quite uh, different i still wanted to maintain the original zen theme so we have flared the arches we have actually deepened it the car sits quite low well uh, way lower than what the original car is and it runs on uh, the on a completely modified uh, knuckle the front and the, it's got a completely different uh, axle in the rear so it's got larger uh, from the stock i think it's a 30 mm upgraded rotor it's got a single pot caliper has uh, got uh, racing pads and rotors and our custom lines and the whole bunch and as you see in the front you know very simple it's just the original zen uh, Uh, hood that has been modified. It's in fiberglass, and now we have reached it out to just give it some bit of uh, heat extraction. Up front here, it's quite simple, straightforward. We've just eliminated the the headlights and we replaced it with uh, you know covers there. There's on one side there's the intake, uh, the air intake, uh, which feeds the air straight into the manifold, and then up front is the standard bumper, which is slightly tweaked. We've made our own skirt and whole bunch. And then, uh, so yeah, the exhaust comes here. It's uh, quite different. We had it at the rear uh, bumper earlier, and then we we uh, made some changes. We've got it down here. So a lot of work has happened underneath to bring it out here. To show you guys what's underneath. So this is the piece. So this is the uh, the detail of the engine bay. I like it very much. Like So a lot of work has gone into make this thing, uh, you know, come alive like this. Um, a whole bunch of things have been moved around, and the, there's nothing uh, that sits in the original Zen's layout. Uh, the engine, of course, sits roughly where it's supposed to, not entirely the same spot. You know, so it's the same G10 engine which is now uh, to convert it to a 1.3 liter board and stroke. Uh, runs a full-blown cam, which has a custom manifold, has a throttle body, and You know, a very different intake system and whole bunch of stuff. There's a big list. Now, some have asked us if we run multiple throttle bodies. We don't. We run a single throttle body, and um, it's it doesn't really have a full-blown uh, racing gearbox yet. It's still running a fairly uh, close box, but not entirely. Not a dog box or anything. It's just a regular synchro mesh with you know with an assortment of gears, which makes the car a little closer. We, like I said, we didn't want to go full-blown with the expense of putting everything more sport oriented we didn't want to go dog box or full close ratio you know making custom gears so we just did whatever was available we, we did the whole uh, mix and match with a bunch of things that we had around us we had a few things lying with us so we just put them on and we have a very different braking system it has a bias valve and it has a custom brake lining all the way from front to rear a lot of people have asked us how much does this car really make the car in its first iteration When we built it last year, was making around 170 horsepower, and uh, in its current iteration, with a bunch of changes that we made, it is well over 180. How much does it drive to? Because I've seen the last video of the car, you know, screaming, and and then somebody asked me, how is that we are able to drive the entire track in one gear? And you know, it's it's like endless RPM. 
So yeah, we do about 8,000. 8,300 RPM is a power peak. We have a cutoff at 8,350 or if need be even 8,400. Quite high, the original car does about 6,500 up by almost 2,000 RPM and you know, it doesn't show any strain or anything. It wants to rev all day. Quite strong torque all the way from 3,500, 4,000 RPM all the way to the red line. So I have a ball driving it. In terms of weight, the car is quite heavy. I really want the car to be sub 800 but it isn't because the car has put on a lot of weight with the, with the roll cage and the whole lot of extra bits added. So the car is quite heavy, it is about 825 kilos with me in it. So the car's drive weight is roughly around, uh, very close to the stock weight of the car. Still around 730, a few kilos lighter than stock. The whole weight reduction wasn't the big bit here because we knew we could lose weight if we wanted to but then I wanted the car to have a, a lot of torsional rigidity and I wanted the car to actually a little on the heavy side because having it too light is also going to upset this the car is not going to turn the way we want to so that's pretty much it why don't you guys put the engine at the rear why don't you guys do this why don't you guys do that well I really wish I could do all of that but uh, this car is actually built to the technical regulations of the Federation so there are specific things that we are allowed to do and we are not allowed to do so I can't just put whatever I want so everything is you know literally as per the rule book so the engine again is based on the regulation where it says that you can't exceed x amount of cc over the base car we have tried to make the most out of it you know to suit the the budget and the classifications and then to ensure that the car is eligible to compete at the highest format of uh, tarmac autocross so yeah we've had great success with the car since the time it's debuted uh, Last year, it's literally won every category that it's, ent that it's entered in. I think the, uh, the only time uh, we've actually lost our two is now to a supercar, you know, to a uh, Porsche GT3 RS, uh, you know, with a difference of 0.3 seconds, uh, which is not bad because, you know, uh, losing against a car, which is uh, not losing, I mean, say that was a different category altogether, but I would ideally want to be the quickest. So. It was off by 0.35 or 0.4 seconds, but yeah, I didn't uh, get enough to warm up the tires and do my own bit. But yeah, happy with uh, whatever we get to do with the car. So another frequently asked question, how they can make their Zen like this? Can they have a car like this? I mean, of course you can have a car like this. You can have very close to this in terms of horsepower and, and everything. But of course, it's not going to be uh, something that you can drive on the road because it's, this is quite loud and this is a very extreme car. Uh, with the kind of power to weight ratio that it has, it's quite extreme. Uh, but yes, why not? I mean, you can have a, a fun weekend car if you really want to. The typical uh, bunch of uh, uh, upgrades that we can offer on the Zen starts from a suspension to the brake upgrade, the balance of the car and a whole bunch is actually something that we can actually replicate. It is something that I did in a way that can become a modular uh, approach to cars that uh, want to be built on a similar manner. So the engine package and a whole bunch of things can actually be uh, down tuned to actually suit street application. We can make you know a Zen turn quite well and make it handle and stop a lot lot better than what the original car is. And if you do have a, an interest in making the car quite tighter with you know bracing up the chassis and making it really do a few things, yes, that also can be done and without affecting you know the road manners or the functionality of the car you can still have your ac you can still have your functional bits and still have you know a very tight fast car around corners and also down the street so yeah uh, there are a lot of options we are always flexible to uh, you know listen to what people have to say we build all sorts of cars and there is there are no two cars which are identical here every car has a very different approach there is a completely different client requirement and just like our motorsport needs you know, every car is built differently, every driver has a different demand. Whatever is one's uh, requirement, target with the car, definitely that can be achieved and addressed. How much does it really cost? How much does, does this whole thing to do this cost? Well, uh, it all depends on how much you really want to do. You can do very small things as low as, uh, you know, the, the little bit of money that you have. If you're starting from a few thousands, it can start from an intake and exhaust and then you can go up the order however you want. Now in terms of uh, having fun with the car, I would suggest that the first thing that any car needs is driving dynamics. Without brakes, without dynamics, handling, you know, making the car fun to drive. I mean, having horsepower is, you know, is, is not a whole lot. It's not a lot of fun. You definitely need to, you know, with a car like this, which is generally very soft and easy to turn, I would recommend that the first mod going in for the coilovers. Mainly the, the Zen as a car has never had any market where people 
could just slap on and uh, do stuff. People had a lot of aftermarket options uh, like springs and few small things but nothing like a like a drop in coil over can actually enhance handling and completely derived out of motorsport exercise. There was nothing like that for the Zen. Uh, mostly it was always the case where people uh, when they did rally and racing with uh, Zens they, they adapted the esteems uh, front dampers and then they did something to the rear so it was always a mix and match of a lot of things. There was nothing specific for this car. So when I decided to build this race car is when we decided to actually come up with the downsized street versions, the motorsport versions and the whole lot. So in case somebody wants to go you know, to the same level as us or wants to build something as a fun weekend car, can do a whole lot with it. So yeah, there are plenty of options. The best way to get your answers would be to get in touch with us and call us and talk to us. And when it comes to uh, customizing your car, the sky is the limit and you can do all sorts of things based on whatever budget you have, something very little to something very high. So it all depends on what you really want to do and accordingly the entire upgrades can be planned. So anything you want to know, give us a shout. Hope you guys enjoyed having a walk around with the car. Thank you.